All right, so this is a giant cell in your gonads. Your gonads. And it's going to make sperm or egg cells, depending on if you're male or female. Now, remember, the sperm or egg cells have to have half of the chromosomes. They can't have the full set. So count how many chromosomes there are here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. <laughs> After we get done with this, the cells are going to have three. That will be half the number of chromosomes. Now, in a human cell, there'd be 46, and you'd end up with 23. Remember that? Yeah. Now, do you notice that there's two sets of chromosomes? The white set and the yellow set. That's because this cell is called diploid or 2N, also known as 2N. That means it has two sets of chromosomes, a set you got from your mom and a set you got from your dad. And in the next chapter, we'll get into genetics. Each chromosome, uh, this chromosome, if it had a blue eye gene, then this chromosome would also have a gene for eye color in the same place. Maybe it has a brown eye gene. So you might be big B, little B. We'll talk about that next chapter. You may remember some of that from, from regular bio. Do you? Yeah. So we're going to go through all these stages here. Q1, S, G2, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, telophase 1, interkinesis, prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2, telophase 2. I want you to be able to do that for me with the magnets. Okay? So, what happens first? G1, what happens to the cell? It grows. It grows and gets bigger. Then it decides once it's big enough, it's going to multiply. So then we go to S phase. What happens in S phase? Copy. The DNA is copy. 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 Copy, copy, copy. copy. DNA copy. Alright? What happens in G2? Oh, wait, we also got to copy the. Copy that. Who knows what happens in G2? Enzymes. Enzymes. Enzymes, proteins are made to get ready for mitosis. That takes a while. Now, prophase 1. Uh, nuclear membrane dissolves. Centrosomes move to opposite sides and shoot out spindle fibers. I like making sound effects. Dylan, you don't seem too happy with any of this. Okay. Um, the spindle fibers attach to the chromosomes. Then the uh, the chromosomes actually match up with their homologous pair. What's another word for that? Synapsis. Yeah. Who got that? Me. Do it, Cartier. Yeah. <laughs> Synapsis is when they match up with their homologous pair. You know what we call four of these? You know what we call this this thing right here? Synapsis. Starts with a T. Tetrad. It's a tetrad. Why do we call it a tetrad? Because it has four chromatids. So the chromosomes match up with their homologous pair, and that's when the crossing over occurs. Exchange of genetic information between two uh, homolog between homologous pairs. And that happens kind of randomly on each chromosome. It'll happen up to three times per chromatid. That's crazy. Well, even it could have more than that, but it's like an average of three times. So really what you have after the crossing over is, is a bunch of, if this were white and this were yellow, it'd actually be a bunch of speckles. It'd be 
white, yellow, white, yellow, white. It, it will be all switched up. And so you have chromosomes that never existed before. That's what leads to a lot of the variation in meiosis. The whole point of meiosis is getting, uh, or one of the big points of it is getting variation in your gametes. You don't want to have, you want to have differences in your kids. You don't want them all to be the same. That helps you uh, evolve if circumstances change. There's like, what about twins? Identical Tw twins. Identical twins is something else. We talked about that yesterday. I don't want to get into that yet. We'll, we'll talk about that later, okay? Yes? Are the spindle fibers carrying in to match up? Or are they just like flaring and finding each other? No, the spindle fibers are carrying them to match up. What's that? What this is a prophase. We're still in prophase one. Mm -hmm. So crossing over happens in prophase. Crossing over happens in prophase one. Got it. Mm -hmm. And then metaphase one, these things, these pairs line up in the middle, carried by the spindle fibers. Now, do they have to line up like this? The yellows on the right and the whites on the left? No. no. They do not. They could line up like that. Or they could line up like that. And what do we call that idea? Generation. The idea that each pair of chromosomes can line up independently of any other pair. Gave me a hint. It's called independent assortment. So, these can line up like that, or can line up like that. You know, that could be the difference between if you turn out male or female. If they line up like that, you turn out male. If they line up like that, you turn out female, if they're the sex chromosomes. If it's in the, the man, they can sperm. So, so that's metaphase uh, one. Then what happens in anaphase one? They separate. The homologous pairs separate and are pulled to opposite sides. This is where problems could happen. What if these two didn't separate and they both went to one side? That could create some issues. Down syndrome. Then you get an extra chromosome on this side, and that could lead to something like Down syndrome. We call that non disjunction. We'll talk more about that in a later chapter, too. <laughs> yes, disjunction is splitting, so non-disjunction is not splitting. Mad! It's a mad, 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 mad world. So that is anaphase one. Then what happens to telophase one? Bring it over. Telophase one, these arrive at opposite poles and a new nuclear membrane forms. And the same thing happens over he here. What happens to the centromeres? Uh, the centromere that joins the two together. Oh, no, not the The centrosomes, yeah. they just stay right there. And then cytokinesis happens. And, well, cytokinesis first, where the cells break into. And then there's a phase of time called interkinesis. When the centrosomes are duplicated. And the cell just kind of sits there waiting. It doesn't really grow, though. It's not like interphase, where it grows real big. They just kind of stay there. Now, these chromosomes may unwind and uncoil and go back to chromatin. They don't always do that, but they could. It doesn't really matter because in prophase two, they're just going to coil back up again. Because we still got to separate these, you see. There's no reason to have a chromosome and then another copy of it in the same cell. We only need these two essentially have the same information except for the crossing over. Um, but uh, we don't need double information in a cell. We can separate those. Um, so prophase two, the centrosomes move to opposite sides of this cell, shoot out spindle fibers, 
and the nuclear membranes dissolve. That's prophase two. Guess I can draw the spindle fibers. And then so they attach in prometaphase. Essentially, meiosis two is just like mitosis. If you know mitosis, it's the same. Everything happens the same way. Crossing over happening again? They attack, no, crossing over only happens in prophase one. Okay. Because there's no homologous pair to cross over with. So uh, that, that wouldn't happen in prophase two. And so they attach in prophase, and then in metaphase two, they line up in the middle. In metaphase two, they line up in the middle. And then in anaphase two, they are pulled apart, and this time they break at the centromere. They break at the centromere and move to opposite sides. Here, too, you could have a non-disjunction map. You could have these go the same way, and, and that could end up with a sperm with too many chromosomes. How likely is it that that happens? Not likely. One in 100,000. Well, how often do you see someone with Down syndrome? Maybe one in 10,000. I'd have to look it up. Um, then, uh, telophase, uh, telophase, these arrive at opposite ends. Spindle fibers disappear. A new nuclear membrane forms. Telophase 2, this is. And it'll happen on both sides. Happens right here. And then the cell starts to pinch in also. Pinches in there. It pinches in here. And it pinches in here. And it pinches in here. And then after telophase two is done, uh, this will boop, separate, chromosomes unwind. Each of these, if it's a, in a male, they'll form sperm cells, you see. Now, did I tell you that each one would have three at the end? So they're all not diploid, you know what we call them when they have just one of each? They're haploid. They only have one set of chromosomes. Well, you don't put one in, you just put in. Now, of course, this will fertilize an egg that also has three. And now you have a new cell with six again, and that can grow into a new person. Well, if it had 46. Makey Sensi? Sensi Makey. Okay, so do this for me. I got each board set up at the beginning before you go into G1. Except this one, I'll fix this one. Go to your board and try to move that around as a group. And each person try to do it. So you can figure this out before we take it. Now I'm going to give you the quiz. I'm going to give you about 10 minutes. Stop filming? Um, Yes, go ahead and stop filming.